Well, hello, my lovelies. Uh, welcome back to Once More with Abby and Claire. I would be Abby. This would be Claire. We know this is not your first time at the rodeo, <laughs> but I'm going to just start by giving a brief. We're kind of sorry. We're both a little bit under the weather just and a little, little off this week, but we didn't, we just couldn't. We couldn't put this one off because they're not two this great one. episodes. Too important, these two episodes. Far too important. It's so good. So we are covering season two, episode 21, Becoming, part one. So again, it's a, it's a two-parter. I'm glad we didn't have to split this up. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be cool. terrible. We see a bit of Angel's past from when he was human um, outside a pub in Ireland with um, one of his friends that doesn't hold the liquor as well and he passes yeah. out and <laughs> and angel looks off into the distance and sees a beautiful elegant woman you know with the big dress and clearly a um a lady as it were um yes. we know by looking at her that it's darla um so we have an idea of what's going to happen as we do know that darla was angel's sire from a past episode so, you know, he comes up to her with this. So I must ask myself what a lady of your station doing in the town with a reputation such as this one has, which I think is just a fancy way of saying what's a nice girl like you. Oh, doing it place is like definitely this. a fancy way of saying that. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do have to say two things about that. One, he is flirting and giving it his all. Two, the man does a terrible Irish accent. It's painful. Oh, oh, it's, it's painful. It's painful. It's very really painful, wish, I must be honest. I really wish they would have rather not even try. Um, but hey, what are you gonna do? So, you know, she he asks her where she's from. She gives him the everywhere, you know, the the mysterious. And he says, I've never been anywhere. And she says, I could show you things. And he's like, Yeah, no, I really want to see what you want to show me. And um, so she tells him she'll show him things she'll never see, he's never seen. He says, show me the world. And she bites him. Um, and then does the whole slice on the check. <laughs> and then, yeah. you know, kind it's of. Very, uh, it's very classic. Motorboats him a little bit with the blood on her chest, which yeah. we enjoy. Um, this episode jumped around a lot. So now we fast forward to the now time. And Angel is watching Buffy patrol in the cemetery and. She kills one vampire, and then as she's going to, you know, kill the second vampire, she's like, take a message to Angel that I'm done waiting, and I'm going to bring the fight to him, and blah, blah, blah. And then the vampire mm -hmm. just attacks her, so she has to kill him. And, you know, so she says, I guess I'll just have to tell him myself. Uh, but then Xander sits up. We didn't even know if he was with her on patrol. Yeah, but he, he just gets knocked see out a lot. Like, oh, it's Tuesday. Xander got knocked out. Um you know, she tells him, you don't have to patrol with me. She just wants this over. She wants to take him out. She's done. She's done messing around. Too many people have been hurt. And yeah. um, so then we jump to a museum curator, you know, and I, I always, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a paleontologist. And I love those little brushes they use Hell to yeah. delicately dust <laughs> off the... And then Giles comes in and the man that was with the woman curator... Um, his name is Doug Perrin. He's played by Jack McGee. He yes. tells Giles, you know, oh, it's nice to meet you. I hear you're like the the leading authority of obscure uh, relics and blah, blah, blah. And Giles is like, well, I don't know about that, but okay. Um, and it's this like giant box and it's got these carvings on it. And, you know, Giles says something like he can tell it immediately predates any colony he's familiar with because Giles is genius um and he's looking and he sees this seam and he asks him you know have you tried to open it yet and the guy said i didn't realize there was an, yeah. an opening you know he kind of moved the dust away uh he thought it was just a solid box 
So he's like, you want to open it? And Giles is like, you know, before we open it, let's, let me take a copy of these here symbols and uh, text back and see if I can translate this. And Mr. Perrin says, you don't want to be surprised? And Giles is like, as a rule, no. no. You know, this is hell mouth we're talking about. So um, and now we jump to the Scoobies and Xander's got his fish sticks and he's re uh, re reenacting, reenacting the last night's adventure. It's pretty fun. <laughs> to the Scoobies. No, you dad, dad, dad. Um, and Buffy, you know, she mentioned something like finals are high. She hasn't even studied and Willow tells her, you know, I'm going to help you. We're going to pass this come hell or high water. And even Cordelia gives her a compliment and says like, you really got the teaching bug. And it's, it's kind of impressive. Um, Willow really loves teaching. You could see it brings out a lot. Yeah, she loves it. Xander says something, something effective, like that was almost a compliment. And uh, yeah, that was then they very nearly a compliment. Cutesy, tickly thing. And she's like, you got yeah. fish hands. And then Snyder walks up and he's being a douche. And he's like, oh, he says, Ms. Rosenberg, is there a shortage of seats? And she's like, not that I'm aware of. And then she realizes she's mm -hmm. sitting on Oz's lap. And so he tells them like something like he doesn't want to run a brothel or something. You know, he's not running yeah, an orgy. Yeah, it's not a brothel or something. It's a classroom. Yeah. So he's such a creep. But when Snyder's <laughs> leaving, Cordelia says she calls him a tiny, impotent Nazi with a bug of his butt the size of an emu. And I got to yeah, get a with that. Because, you know, a tiny, impotent Nazi <laughs> is so big. Um, and again, with this episode, we jump around a lot. So we jump to London, 1860, and we see a human Drusilla in her yes. church. And she is a pure, as pure as they come, God-fearing girl. And as she's about to go into the confessional, we see on the priest side, the priest is being murdered, you know, as that happens. Yes. Um and so then Angel is in the other side and he pretends to be the priest with a terrible Irish accent. And um, she says, you know, I'm so sorry. I've been having these visions. My mother thinks that I'm cursed and yeah, she's blah, blah, blah. And I want to be good and I want to be pure. And, um, and that seeing things is an affront to the Lord, but she's not doing it on purpose. No. And um, an angel says something like, don't worry, God loves all creatures, even little little devil children like you or something. Yeah. And he makes her do 10 Hail Fathers and an act of contrition, which doesn't seem, you know, that difficult. And he lets her go. Um, but you can tell immediately he is enamored with her innocence and her yeah. purity. And he's got to have to have that. So... Then we jump to Drusilla today and she comes in and spikes in his chair and she says, I met an old man. I didn't like him. He got stuck in my teeth. And it was just like, you know, she's so weird. And the moon has started whispering all sorts of yeah, dreadful she, things. And she's having one of her always. visions. Something terrible is coming. It's at the museum. So she's super excited. Angel super excited. Spike is angry as usual yeah um, i mean it's a great actual little and so, uh, yeah because spike says something like you know oh did you or angel says did you see that all in your little head and spike goes no nah, she read it in the paper dude like it's on the front page yeah, of the paper it's so great mysterious obelisk unearthed that's what's been whispering to me and uh so we jump again jump around a lot and willow is tutoring buffy she is an amazing teacher, as Buffy says, she's, um, you know, Buffy's down on herself that this is just, you know, how is she ever going to use any of this stuff and, and blah, 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 my life, my life. And and Willow gives her the whole, you know, don't sell yourself short. You could do anything you want to do, yeah. the whole teacher thing. And she's like, wow, you really are a great teacher. Um, yeah, she's great, I know. And so she's like, all right, we're going to focus. And Buffy goes, okay. And she puts her pen down and it rolls off her little trapper keeper and slides down between the moment two we've been waiting for for half a season now exactly that so moment. then she goes oh wait she grabs it and as she comes up willow is still kind of talking to her and 
she's like she has this deja vu and she's like i see it perfectly and the pe and she puts the pen back down and it does the same thing and it rolls down and this time she looks and she picks up the floppy disk and your heart is in your stomach and she says oh must be miss calendars and and um you know she says well it's, it's not willows she knows it's not hers but she pops it in the computer to see you know she's not sure if it's morbid or not but she wants to see what it is and they both realize that it is the spell to um give angel back his soul that yeah, the had curse, completed basically. the translation yes the curse uh we jump back again this time to the romanian woods of 1898 and this is the yeah, moment where scene. um and i realized how much the the, and I hate to use the word gypsy, but they use it themselves. And we know now that's considered derogatory. Um, it, but it's, it's, um, it's cultural I, at that time. So I'm just yeah, putting it out there. Uh, it's cultural at that upset. time. And it's, I don't personally find it offensive, but I can just different offensive words. Bearing in mind I'm Roma, as yeah. you know, in, in bloodline. So I don't personally find it offensive. But in our country, it's actually less offensive than other terms we would use. Gotcha. Okay, that makes if that sense. makes any sense so, to you. Um, it does. Yeah, I'm just putting it out there that I'm not using that term offensively. No, no. But, and I, um, would, I would agree. We're not using it for cultural appropriation. And as someone who is actually Roma, it's used as a term that it's actually the portraying in the story. A per exactly. So um, it is the Romanian woods, and you see the funeral of the young girl, the one that was most important to the village that Angel had killed. And what I noticed is how much she looks like Drusilla when I saw her lying there, that I had to rewind it and go, wait, I didn't mess that up, did I? Um, and you hear the old woman putting the curse on him. Yeah. And when it hits and he's like there and, and the man tells him like, you're gonna live and you're gonna remember everything you did. And that yeah. weight of that soul comes crashing back on him because everybody knows vampires are bastards. So like he just spent oh, the God, last- yeah. No, so when was no soul, first? that's the whole point. Exactly. He was changed in, uh, blah, 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 blah. I forget what year now, but you know, it's quite a while that he's been a vampire and, uh, and he's done some things one. that weren't so good. And now it's 1898 and, uh, he's been cursed and he starts remembering all those terrible things he has done. And we flash back to Buffy and Willow telling Giles that they think, Miss Calendar had actually completed the translation yes. of the curse and that they think it would have worked. Um, and Xander, although I get where he's coming from, he's just such a douchebag. You know, he's saying, you know, oh, great. So, like, he killed her, but you're going to get your boyfriend back. So that makes everything okay. And maybe, maybe he should just stay the way he's done and he just needs to die. And uh, we're showing around 1860. That he was changed. So then it's yeah. 1898. Around that he 18, was given. 18, late 1800s, we're, we're guessing at what I've got written down for now. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, we know that 1860 is when he saw Drusilla and he was already a vampire. So, yeah, so we're looking at that area. Okay. Um, That's what he's saying here, but I, I think we could take it slightly further back. But yeah, I'm sure if I looked it up, I didn't even think to look it up, to be honest. No, I didn't. I'll be honest. So, um, Giles says, you know, it's a start, but this this involves a higher level of black magic that he's really privy to. And then Willow steps in and, again, foreshadowing, which we won't discuss now, and says, yeah. you know, I've been going through her files and I've been researching black arts for funsies, you know, because that's what we do. Educational fun, of course. And she really thinks she has it in her to do the spell. And Giles tells her that channeling such magic could open up a door that she might not be able to close. And again, this is a big foreshadowing. For I've literally got a bit wrote in huge letters, prophetic. It's yep. like, that yep. is just a look at things to come, isn't it, really? But for those sweet, naive people that have not watched on further, we may not know what happens. Um Xander again steps in and says, who cares? He should die. You want to yeah. forget all about Miss Calendar's murder so you can get your boyfriend back. And at this point, Buffy just can't. Like, she she walks out. She's uh, They're all just staring at Xander like, what, the, what just came out of your mouth? 
we're back at the museum with Mr. Perrin and um, he hears whispering like from the obelisk, the box is whispering at him. And as he goes up to it, there's Drusilla behind him and she drains him. And then he just like, Drew, save me some, you know, because la, la, la. they're so cool. Um, um, quick thing, Angel, it was 15, uh, sorry, 1753. 1353, really? 17. Oh, 1753. Makes much more he was, sense. he met okay. Gala, 1753. Okay, so at that point he had been a vampire vampire for almost 150 years so he had done some damage that makes a lot, yeah, a lot of he, sense. he had done a lot by that time yeah um buffy's at her house you know she's being all sentimental with the clottering that that angel had gotten her that we know from you know she has pensive face as she might say and pensive um, face. smell the fire acting <laughs> when she's out on patrol and who should surprise her which i gotta say it takes guts to surprise the slayer the only one to do that would be another slayer and we yeah. love the back Kendra Kendra the vampire slayer. Oh, I absolutely love Kendra. Do you? I um I go back and forth with Kendra. She's beautiful. I just think she's hysterical. I wish we would have gotten a little more out of her. Yeah, I Kendra. feel we were cheated. I yeah, feel bet. there was a lot more to be had with her. Definitely. Okay. Um, so Buffy's like, you know, what are you doing here? And she's like, wait, 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 let me guess. Uh, your watcher told you the very dark power is coming to There's Sunnydale. There's a great power rising in Sunnydale. A great yeah. power is rising in Sunnydale. And she's like, yeah, that's that's pretty much close. Um, yeah, that's about it, yeah. And one of my favorite lines is they bring the giant box back to the mansion. And Spike's like, it's a big rock. I don't have a rock that big. Can't wait I can't to wait tell my friends. friends they don't have a rock rocket. that big. It's so good. So we find out that a Cathla is the demon that came forth to swallow the world. Now this is uh, Angel selling this. He was killed by a virtuous knight who pierced the demon's heart before he could draw breath and perform the act. So before that happened, a Cathla was turned to stone and buried where neither man nor demon would want to look. So they open up the box as, you know, vampires were wont to do. And there is Stone Akatla in there with a sword in his chest, as promised. Um, Spike says something like, let me guess. Someone pulls out the sword and wackiness ensues. And, it's, and Angel tells him only someone who is worthy can pull out the sword. And he will swallow the world and every living creature on the planet will go to hell. Uh, he says, my friends, we're about to make history end. And it's yeah. pretty ominous. Um, we jump again to Giles, who's on the phone with the museum and told that the artifact is missing and that the curator's been murdered by vampires. So um, Giles explains, again, what we already know, that in one breath, the demon will create this vortex and it will suck everything on earth into it into this demon dimension whether it be what we know of as hell or just a demon dimension and really yeah. what's the difference um and I any mean, non -demon, point, yeah we, are, we have no discussed what. those outcomes in buffy but i think further on the difference of like different dimensions and stuff becomes a lot more apparent and no spoilers means, but it's explained a lot more I do exactly. feel, and it could be anywhere. It's not necessarily hell. They describe it as hell, but right. So any, any non-demon life is going to suffer horrible and eternal torment. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Uh, Buffy tells Willow, you know, you should please try the curse. And again, you know, Xander's blah blah blah. And Kendra jumps in and says, you know, I agree with Xander. And she's just, you know, the you fight don't know. Is, oh. But it's heart wrenching that fight in that library between them. It's like, but she has possibly, an excellent point. She tells them, "What if I'm too late? What if he kills yes. me? We still need this as a possibility for one less thing." You know, whether or not, like she says, at the end of the day, I'm going to do what I have to do. But um, this is like Plan B or a backup, and. Um, 
And she sells it. She's like, Willow, you might be our only hope if I lose. And Willow's like, I don't want to be the only hope. Can we please have yeah. another hope? Another hope? So then Kendra pulls out, you know, the sword that was actually, so it's a second sword that was blessed by the same knight who yeah. slay the demon or slew the demon. Slew. Um, <laughs> and slay so, or slew. Slew the demon. So then, you know, Willow says, look, I need about a day, you know, to really get this going. And she's like, but I need an orb of Thessala. And we know what happened to the last orb of Thessala. Yeah. It was smashed. So Giles is like, I have one of those. I've been using it as a paperweight. And he presents. Which is Thessala. kind of a throwback, isn't it? To the earlier episodes when uh, Jenny went to look for the orb of Thessala. And he tells yeah, a story about, about a, the hipsters buying them. I've been using it as a paperweight. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. So um, <coughs> we're back to the mansion and you see a couple vampires dragging this man into the room and Angel recites, he says, I will drink the blood. The blood will wash over me and I will be cleansed. I will be worthy to free a Cathla as I ascend, as I become. And he bites the guy and then he has the blood on his hand and he's like, I am everything I've done has led me here and, and you know, grabs the sword and you see a whole light show. But then we jump to a flashback again. So they're hopping us all over the place. And this time, this is great though. This is Manhattan 1996. And we meet Whistler, who again, we will see a few times before the series, both Angel and Buffy are and done. And again, no spoilers, but again, that character turns into another character when it changes to a different franchise. Uh, yeah. Um, kind of, it's the same premise. Whistler is definitely inspired the Doyle character, and that's all I'll say with no spoiler to when we get to that. Right. I agree with you, and we will have a good talk about that if, when that happens. Um, so Angel, at this point, looks and smells like a homeless man. Um, you could tell he's literally been feeding on rats because now he has a soul, and... You know, it can't he can't do it. So this man walks up to him and tells him that he's disgusting and has the stench of death. And um, the actor's name is Max Perlick. He plays Whistler. Um, Whistler knows he's a vampire. He knows he's not going to bite him. He knows he has a soul. He knows a lot about Angel and what's going on. He tells him that like a rat a day is no way to live and that the butcher shops are giving away more blood than you can eat in a day. And, you know, you got to get your shit together, but you got to want to because you can't yeah. keep looking. You've got to live in the real world. It. Yeah. And so he says, look, I want to, I want to show you something. I, you could be somebody as, if you wanted to, um, or you could be a sewer rat, you know, real part of society, sewer rat, whatever you want. So, um, he takes Angel to Los Angeles, 1996, Los Angeles, California. The car's got the blacked out windows, which I love. Oh. It's so reminiscent of like near dark and all these other great things. Yeah, it is. Um, and Angel's, you know, being all creepery and he sees Buffy for the very first time coming out of class. And she's, you know, being Buffy back in the day, careless and clueless and sucking on her lollipop. And she sits down, says goodbye to her friends. Call me, call me, call me. And, it's so um, fluffy. It's so buffy. And this man walks up to her. The actor is Richard Real. We know him as Merrick, which from the Buffy movie, Merrick was Buffy's yep. first uh, watcher. Yep. He tells her, I need to speak with you. You have a destiny, blah, blah, blah chosen one she thinks he's crazy but we don't go through all that that we went through in the movie so we jump and we fast forward to the uh first time buffy kills a vampire merrick yep. takes her out to prove to her that vampires are real in the cemetery which again we know from the movie and um angel you see watching from the the bushes which again that's just he seems to be such a good creeper and I love that she has to stake him twice because she does it in the stomach, not the heart. And then, like, you know, then does it again in the heart. Um, and yeah, you know, the vampire correct. explodes and she squeals. And, um, you know, Merrick was just showing her the kind of power she had. I do love when she she flipped the vampire and then went like, oh, I did that. Like, that was really cool yeah, for her. It's, it's um, kind of the origin, as you say, it, and it runs on the backstory of the first movie. 
Yeah, and then we even go to, because this also happened in the movie, we kind of see Angel watching Buffy at home, fighting with Joyce and saying, you know, you had your father and I worried and blah, 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 blah. And then you kind of cut to, you hear her parents fighting and you know this is right before they broke up and we know that Buffy's troubles were one of the leading causes, or at least in her mind, of the parents breakup. Yeah. up. How she um, thinks, yeah. And... Angel tells Whistler he wants to become somebody. He's he's made up his mind, and they have a lot of work to do together. So uh, we owe a lot to Whistler, and we'll see him later. Yeah, definitely. Um, hi, George. We jump back to Akathla. Angel finishes the ceremony, grabs the sword, big old light show, and the sword does not budge. And you know, Spike, someone wasn't worthy from the background, mm. which is, of course... He's so great. I love him so much. Um, we're, we're in school, and in the hallway, you see this figure, you know, all cloaked, walking through the hallways, and you're like, hmm. And Buffy is taking her final learn in the classroom, and this figure comes in the classroom, removes the hood, and says, tonight, sundown you will come to him you will come to him or more will die tonight and then she bursts into flames because she is a vampire <laughs> she is in daylight so this happens in the middle of class and it always amazes me how people are all so clueless that they still don't understand but yeah but we made big strides in this episode so um in the library kendra wants to go with buffy to fight Angel, um, but Buffy asks her to stay, that she needs her to protect them. And Willow needs to work on the curse, and if Angel is fighting Buffy, then he's not killing anybody else. Like, so let's get this ritual thing, he can't be doing it if we're... So, this is adorable. Kendra gives Buffy her lucky son. Oh, it is adorable. Mr. So Pointy. adorable, Mama. Mr. Pointy, which Buffy keeps forever, as we know of Mr. Pointy. Yeah, Mr. Pointy. And well, Buffy no, says, hey, remind me to get you a stuffed animal. <laughs> because yeah, I've got really feels a lot, definitely. So Buffy is off. George, do we have <coughs> here? Being weird. Uh, Buffy's off in search of Angel. They meet up at the cemetery with his hello lover, which I is just awesome. And they start fighting Willow starts doing the spell. Giles is reading in Latin. Willow is repeating in English. And Cordelia's working that incense, man. I gotta say, she's really trying to become a, a part of this. Yeah, um, definitely. At some point, Buffy realizes that Angel's stalling. And at this moment, the vampires bust in on the Scoobies. And... Um, I got to give Xander credit. He tells Cordelia, run. Like, he just shoves her out the yeah, door. He, he does he, play the hero definitely yet again in this episode. He's yeah, like, he gets he a broken her arm out of there. Out of and... this. Uh, Willow gets trapped under the, the shelves of books. Uh, and when Buffy realizes what's going on, she runs back to try to save her friends. And then this, this scene, this scene will always get me. Um, Drusilla walks into the library in her, and she's in total control. And the other yeah, vampire she is back off, and she's fighting with Kendra, and they're both holding their own. But then Drusilla hit the puts the whammy on, slaps the whammy on Kendra. Be in me, be in yeah. my eyes, and. She, yeah, she totally hypnotizes her, and then she slits her throat. Night, night. And uh, then she says, let's get what we came here for, and they grab Giles and take him away. When Buffy gets there, she sees Kendra is dead. It's a very moving scene, like this whole yeah. slow motion of the, everybody. That slow-mo in the blue jacket, Yeah, again, it's, it's so one funny. of the most, I, I think they use it in season three, um, um, the 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 picks yeah. I'm sure it's used in season three as a clip. I'm sure for like the uh, intro. Yes, 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 yes. There's that scene when she turns and runs into the school and she goes on the corner in the slow mo. It's like iconic to me. Yeah. The second it came on, I got chills and I was like, yes, so this. moving. Yeah. 
you know, she's leaning over her dead body and all you hear is freeze and you see the, the oh, arm with the gun yeah. and you get it to be continued. And I actually remember the first time I watched this. It was like, I had to wait a whole week. It was- I literally wrote the same thing down here and I thought, can you remember having to wait an entire week to know what happened next? 100%. So that is the end of my part of becoming part one and I turn it over to my lovely co-host for her additions. Right, so this week I have a couple of little things. Obviously, I think anybody who's a Buffy fan, if you don't and you're kind of watching all these for the first time with us, we appreciate that. But um, <laughs> these were both written and directed by Joss Whedon, both of this episode and the next one um, as the two-parter, which was amazing, I thought. Um, there was no actual music in this, and I feel because in two we come to a different level with the music, which we'll get to, I feel they left this very much, it's a very back and forth episode. We, we as you say, we flash in and out of different time zones, different relationships, and we see through, so, uh, we see, sorry, um, Dala the first time as Dala, but obviously the first time we actually saw Dala, which was in the pilot, she wasn't actually Dala or she was. We're not sure because Angel wasn't focused on her at that point, if you get what I mean. And now we yeah. see her as, as a flashback and who she was. Um, I, I think it's great that we see also Drew, as you say, how fragile she is in this episode as we who she was Angel. before. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think it's it's definitely this and the next episode give us a, a massive insight into how Angel was Angel and how all the relationships were formed. Yeah, really it, quickly too. Like they managed yeah, to it, just it's give one, you one after the other of a, this is why this is like this. This is why this is like this. This is what happened in the past. They kind of catch you up in 2.6 seconds in this episode and the next one mm -hmm. to everything, as you say, with the Slayers flashbacks the whistler element that then comes back to why angel is where he is and we find out that he's been following her for a very very long time you know um a couple of little fun facts um henry high henry high that they use is actually a, a backlot at universal really yeah and it was also used for the clock tower in the back to the future films the same lot Ah, uh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, like which that. I thought was pretty cool. Pretty yeah. cool little thing. Um, other than that, I think I'll only say that because so much happens in this episode, we're being set up for the next one we get on to. Yep. Yeah. A little fact that I don't know if it means anything. So we talked about how Ed Sheeran had done the song bad habits because he was pretty much obsessed with Buffy. Right. Yeah, this is odd. Whether this is relevant or not, I don't know. I knew, I've seen Angel a million times in these backstories and he's Irish. Now, in what I'm reading it, it came from Galway and it said it in the precursor of, the, you know, the initial titles. Um, you have the song Galway Girl. Ah. I'm kind of finding little things now. I know it's off topic, but Ed Sheeran seems to be a massive fan, and I'm finding little yeah, things that go yeah. along that he's either used a word, a name, a premise, something. I mean, Bad Habits, I think you listen to it as well, and that literally <clears throat> talks about Spike and Buffy. Again, in this episode, I think Spike starts to come into his own as we go into the next one. I think the next and one as you one said about favorites. Jack McGee, Yes. Uh, we'll do a also known from. Uh, he was in Backdraft, Lethal Weapon 2, Showgirls, Basic Instinct, The Doors, uh, Fear and Loving in Las Vegas, Casino, The Fugitive, Fried Green Tomatoes at Whistle Stop Cafe, and Waterworld. Ah, Someone was just telling us that they loved Waterworld. Anyway. Oh, God. I know. Do I know them? No, somebody so from, from the chat. I think we had this discussion. I don't remember who. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's was... why I had. There's no music this week, but that's what I kind of had. I mean, it was a, it's a roller coaster episode. Oh yes, 
Yes. And the next one, which we can jump right into episode yeah, two because absolutely. it is. So again, season two, episode 22, becoming part two. Again, we it starts up right where the other one left off with the freeze and the cops are arresting Buffy. Xander is unconscious. And actually, that was the first time Buffy even realized that he was there because she was yeah. so caught up in everything. Um, Snyder walks in, tells the cops, you know, she's trouble. You better, you know, get a get a handle on her. And as they are reading her her rights, she knocks him out and runs from the cops. And that's the moment where Snyder actually looks afraid for a moment because she would kill him if she wanted to. If she was half just the bad person that he feels. about four comments at once just now. Sorry. Oh, no. Uh, Clint says, showgirls, he's a serious actor. Yeah, whatever. You know how I feel about showgirls. Um, Nicole loves Waterworld. Oh, Nicole, bless her. I thought it was Nicole. I didn't want to call her oh, out. But, oh, I mean, I didn't Nicole, hate it. I, I love you, but, it, but oh, that's a story for another day. Jesus. Right, sorry, so, carry on. No, that's okay. So, um... Buffy, you see Buffy sneaking into the hospital. She needs to know how her friends are. And then Xander comes up behind her and they embrace. And um, they take her, he takes her to see Willow and Willow is still unconscious. And, you know, he says, look, they don't know if she's going to wake up. It's here, it's there. Cordelia actually feels guilty for running, which is such growth on her part. Um, yeah, she grows so much. This is the same woman that gave her car to her grandmother because she was afraid <laughs> that Angel was going to kill her. Um, she's like, cow before. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, we really see Giles good. waking up and Angel just staring at him. And um, you know that he's in for a rough time here. Um, the cops are questioning Joyce. They're so misogynistic and rude. You know, basically your daughter has a history of violence, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. She's like, there's no way my Not daughter killed anybody. Um, we see Buffy running in Giles' house looking for him, and she runs into Whistler, and yeah, George agrees. Uh, she's not amused by Whistler at all. Um, no. She's just not, and he's kind of lucky that she's not killing him, but um, he does tell her the sword is not enough. Um, you yeah. have to know how to use it, and that as she walks out, there are the cops again. They're trying to arrest her. They pull a gun on her and she looks, you know, concerned because these are humans. And who should come to her rescue but Spike, of all people? Um, oh, it's just, it's beautiful. It's the best. It's that moment. And Spike basically says, you know, we got to team up and go against Angel. And she's like, do you think I was literally born yesterday? And, you know, his theory, and I agree with him. He's like, you know, we talk a big game, but we actually like this world. Yeah. And what Angel is looking to do is literally destroy this world that I'm actually having fun in. And, um, you know, she's not buying it. And he said, look, Angel has your watcher and you know he's torturing him. And I want to stop Angel. I want to save the world. Um it's kind of like if you watch Good Omens with uh, Zerophil, she, you know, he likes the they don't have him, he likes yeah. the, Oh, you need to. But um, no, no, it's on the list. He does tell her, he's like, what did he say? He's like, it's got dog racing and Manchester United and you've got people and I it's love It's so beautiful. He's like, it's oh. a, what did he call them? A happy meal, walking happy meal with legs or walking something? Walking happy meals with legs. Yeah, so funny. Um, but he says, look, there's one catch. Drusilla leaves with me. Like, we leave. You will never see us again. It's always he's like, true. You know? Yeah. And she's like, that's bullshit. But he's like, no, that's what's going to happen. So uh, we're back at the hospital. Sanders actually being really sweet, talking to Willow, trying to get her to wake up. You know, you're my best friend. He tells her he loves her. And she begins yeah, to her. Crazy. And she wakes up. And she says Oz's name, which is. Which is really sweet as well. Which is really sweet. And Oz is, of course, there. He walks in and she has him. She's like, is my head big? My head feels really big. It doesn't feel normal size. It feels big. Um, we jump around a lot. Still Angel torturing Giles. He's completely sadistic. Yeah. Um, Buffy and Spike are walking back towards her house. And Joyce pulls up in the driveway. And she jumps out. And she's like, where have you been? Blah, 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 blah. And then a vampire attacks Joyce. And 
Buffy kills the vampire and then is forced to tell Joyce the truth about oh, it's just, player, which is a great moment. The whole exchange of this, and I, I know this is, oh, I'm going to say it now. I know this is a Spike and Buffy, uh, Buffy and Angel episode, but Spike's whole character development in this way, you totally get him from a different perspective mm -hmm. and you, you see the you interactions between him, Buffy and Joyce. So in the good. whole thing, probably is my favorite thing of the show. Yeah. Um, and I know at one point it was really funny because she's on the phone. Um, because she does tell when Joyce is like, I need to know, you know, police are looking for you. She tells them that they're in a punk band together, but um, and how great would that be? That was so good. Yeah. So, <laughs> she was on the phone. Was a singer. what the dream. <laughs> Buffy's on the phone with Willow and Xander, and you just see Joyce and Spike sitting in the living room, so you know, making great. small talk, which is hysterical. And um, she's like, you look familiar. Have we met? And he's like, yeah, you hit me with an ax once, you know, get the hell away from my daughter. And, and I was, was peeing myself. Beautiful. I think they were so cute. So um, Drew, well, she tells Spike, like, Drusilla killed... Kendra, I'm not letting her live. And she's like, Drew, back to Slayer. Like, ah, ah. And then he's like, oh, wrong room, you know, maybe read the room. But um, yeah, it is good. And then Joyce with her, well, have you tried not being the Slayer? Which is, you know, so Again, I love that she knows and then one. somehow goes back later to not knowing, but that's jumping the gun. Um, Joyce doesn't believe Buffy. And Buffy tells her, like, open your eyes. All the fights, all the things, all the years that you were washing blood out of my clothes. Like, did you not think something was going on? Um, and they get they get in a big fight. And Buffy pushes Joyce, you know, and just not not terribly hard, but it's a moment. And yeah, it's definitely a moment. she goes to leave. And Joyce says to her, if you leave this house, don't ever come back. And there's that moment where they look at each other and Buffy just shuts the door. I mean, there's nothing. She has no choice. This is for destiny. So Willow insists on trying the curse again. And they're like, look, you're too weak. Like, this is not okay. It was hard enough before. And she's like, this is my resolve face. You've seen my resolve face. You know what this means. Resolve. Yeah, it's true. And um, uh, back to Angel torturing Giles. Giles really is a badass, but you could tell he's at the end. Yeah, um, he's getting that. And so he's like, all right, I'll tell you. He's like, in order so to good. perform the ritual, you have to perform it in a tutu. And then he's like, he, he. <laughs> so, so um, then, you know, Angel's going to kill him. And Spike actually stops him from killing him. And, and, and even Angel's like, why are you being the level-headed one? He's like, well, if you kill him, you know, you're not going to get what you need. So, like, don't do it. Um, and... Buffy goes to get her sword from the library, the one that Kendra had brought, and Snyder comes in, and he is just in total douchebag mode. And it's with the utmost day. of the glee, he tells her that she is expelled. So now she's lost her home. She's lost her friend. She's lost her watcher. She's lost her school. And... Um, and there's that moment where she lets Snyder know, where he says something like, I bet you never had a single date in high school. And he's like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's just, and the thing yeah, is, she knows she can kill him. He knows she can kill him. And um, so we go back to poor Giles. And just Drusilla's playing with him and his brain. And she does her whole, you know, be and me moment and hypnotizes him. And figures out what he wants. And, and he sees her now as Jenny. And, you know, he tells her to see with her heart. And he's like, have you told Angel about the ritual? And he said, no, we have to keep, we have to keep him away from Akathla. And she's like, why is he close to figuring it out? And, um, and he says, later, later. And she does get him to tell her that Angel's blood is the key. So uh, then they start making out <laughs> and it's ridiculous. She wants to stop out. making out. And, and you see Spike and Angel just watching her and they're like, <clears throat> and she's like, it's 
saw me. I was in the moment. But um, <laughs> so Buffy goes back to Giles' house and finds Whistler again. And Whistler tells her the same thing that we just found out, that Angel's yep. blood will open the door, but his blood will also close the door. So that's what he meant by saying, you need to know how to use this as well. Um, Xander meets Buffy at the old mansion. Um, she stops Buffy and he's going to tell her that Willow is working on the spell because that's what Willow told her to say. And he just says, uh, Willow told me to tell you to kick his ass. And you know, you're like, oh, you son of a bitch. But I literally wrote, this is when Xander fucks up. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't have changed anything, to be honest with you. It would have, but it comes back to bite him in the ass. Right, exactly. So Angelus is uh, performing the ritual again. Willow is on her end working on the curse um, with Oz and Cordelia. I love that Oz is getting involved. The yeah, angel. it's nice. It is a regular now. It yeah, really Angel's cutting his hand as Buffy comes in and she says, hello, lover, the same way he did, which I love. Um, and Angel's like, you know, oh, you really think you can take us all on? And uh, she says, no, I don't. And then at that same moment, Spike hits him from behind and Drusilla loses her shit, first of all. And Spike just keeps beating Angel and Buffy starts taking on all the other vampires and then Drusilla, she's so mad, she tackles Spike. It's a great and fight, I'll be honest. They're fighting, he does knock her out for a minute. Xander gets Giles out of the building. He thinks it's a trick. He's like, you're just showing me what I want to see. And, and he's like, then why would they make you yeah. see me? And he's like, good point. You know, was, that yeah, was that was pretty point. smart on Xander's <laughs> point. Like, you know, this isn't a trick. They wouldn't, they'd show you anybody else. Um, Angel grabs the sword with the bloody hand and pulls it from a Catholic's chest, which is um, not so good. And no, Buffy has a sword. Time. No, it's not so good. And they are sword fighting and, you know, at that moment, you see Willow completing the spell and the magic just takes over her. And then she just starts spouting out languages. Well, no, she doesn't speak. And it's super cool. Um, Spike, again, knocks out Drusilla and just takes her out of the room. It, it actually, looks back. She, he took a sleep Oh, choke choked her out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Puts a sleep bolt on her and choked her out. Which again, there's no breath. I'm not sure how that works. But yeah, we'll, well, this comes up a lot. In that the first comes up reasons. a lot. Yeah, we'll have to uh, we'll have to revisit that one at another time. Yeah, but, I feel um, that will be a special um, investigation. <laughs> yeah, and he looks back and he sees Angel and Buffy fighting, and he's like, "God, he's gonna kill her." And he's like, "No, right?" And he walks away anyway because he doesn't yeah. give a shit. Um, but Buffy gets her second wind. You know, I love that scene where he's like, you've got nothing. You know, what, what? take away this, take away this. And he's like, what do you got? And he goes to stab her and she just grabs this thing. She's yeah, like, in her hands like that. It's an iconic moment. And again, we revisit it. A number, yes, exactly. And um, there's some great stunt work in that fight. She mm. picks Angel's Absolutely. Ass. Um, you see Spike and Drusilla driving off in the same car with the painting. What an it. iconic thing when he's driving with the one hand and he drags her across the sea and he's like, he's just giving it with one hand the entire thing and it's like, it's just great. It's just such I love a cool it. moment. Um, <clears throat> and then as Buffy is literally about to kill Angel, you see his soul being restored and you know he 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 doesn't remember any of it. And it's like this moment, Buffy, and they hug and and then they kiss and she's just beside herself and she feels very dramatic. Very. Shut your eyes for me and she kisses him with his eyes closed. Oh. And then she shoves that sword right through him. And there's that great iconic she, moment of him just like, you know, with the He knows she's gonna do it from the second even she can tell that he's changed back. She's oh, still yeah. doing it. The second she, she sees no that portal open, she there is no doubt on her face, and she's like, she calms herself. It's pretty epic, really. Yeah, it shows you know? her strength and how she's become. And Absolutely, because and that how vortex she is, is to be this layer. Yep, and they, she needs to close it. So, um, Clint says, "Red hair on the left, blue hair on the right." It's like looking through three D glasses. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Are we coming right at you? Coming right at you. So the portal closes with Angel getting sucked inside and the world is saved. Um, 
you see Buffy head home. You see Joyce go into Buffy's room later and realize that all her clothes are gone. Buffy is yeah. gone. She's taken her stuff and left. We've got Sarah McLaughlin in the background, which full of grace is one of those songs I love, which I'll let you talk about later. But uh, the Scoobies are all talking about how nobody's seen Buffy and that, you know, they go through the maybe the spell worked. Maybe it didn't maybe work. They're together. Maybe, they're together. maybe they're not. Maybe she needs some time. Maybe she's feeling. Um, she, you know, they think maybe it worked because Cordelia said, you know, the orb did that cool glow yeah. thing. And uh, Willow says she felt something. And Xander said maybe it wasn't in time and she had to kill him. And they're speculating that she'll probably be back soon because school is starting. They don't know that she's been expelled. No. Um, and she is watching from a distance and she gets on a bus and leaves Sunnydale. And it is a pretty epic moment. It, yeah, that whole the whole sign at the end as well. You know, if you are now living in Sunnydale, please yes. come back home. It's like, and I remember at this point, we had, I think we were like seven months, uh, maybe even eight, ten months in between seasons. Oh, before we got time, another yeah. season. And I feel we're coming up very, very much at this point to the writer's strikes, which are again going on at the moment. But at that time, I think you remember, we had a halt, I think, for a very long time of a lot of these seasons. I think we're coming up to this now. And I remember waiting so much for the next sort of third season start to go, why, what happened? It was four months in between this episode and season one. But you've got to remember, Either oh, at England. least on our end. I don't know about with you. Yeah, guys. well, in England, it was, we were behind you, but also we had bigger gaps in between seasons, especially in the early days. And then it, I think it was only when we got to, like, season five that it started to marry up a little bit, where I think I was a week behind, maybe, but not yeah, until that's then. that's got to be frustrating, I'll tell you. Oh, it was. It was, t I mean, to the point where we would try and find it on streaming sites before it actually was on. Because it right. was too, I mean, we had no social media or such then. Right. So it wasn't so like anybody like, could really spoil it. But there was still internet access. So you would maybe try and find the episodes or get an episode from someone or get someone to download it and rip you a copy on a DVD. Yeah. I remember those days. Actually, for me, it was probably VHS at the time. Yeah, it probably was, actually. Yeah, yeah, I would 90. think it probably was. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. So we're about on the cusp of that. I feel that. Well, actually, this was ninety-eight. So ninety-eight. Yeah, yeah, so I would yeah. say we're on the cusp of it. Fun times. What else uh, you got? We have had mini discs maybe before that and things like that. Probably. Maybe. 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 Um. Yeah. So the music from this week, as you said, "Full of Grace" by Sarah McLaughlin. Now, I'll be honest; she's not very famous in our country. I wouldn't have known oh, her unless it was for this. Yeah, she's not someone that is known in this country as a as a musician. Um, I guess and this episode, uh, believe it or not, Christoph Beck's score won an Emmy for this episode for Close Your Eyes. Oh. And that was for the whole Buffy and Angel scene before Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> and if you remember, um, during it, we've got that... Uh, that the Buffy reprise that we hear a lot in the sort of tense moments that duh, 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 yeah. you know which one I mean yeah I that do. is his as well and yeah he won an Emmy for this for this episode for the for the musical score very cool I love that yeah so that was pretty cool um there's also a, a track on the same album that Full of Grace is on by Sarah McLaughlin uh called Angel yes. whether it's a whether it's a coincidence or not it's a coincidence, but um, right. I I I love that album. I love Sarah McLachlan. I actually not someone I'm familiar with. I'll be perfectly honest. I say not someone who is recognised. I, I don't think in our I country. get that. Um, when I was so, it's got to be 1992, 93, 94, somewhere around there. And my friend Steve Cohn took me to see a band called the Chieftains. And I had never even heard of the Chieftains. I mean, I'd heard of them, but I didn't know anything about them. But they're just a fun sort of older jam band. And Sarah McLaughlin, who wasn't anybody at the time, opened up for them. And I was like fourth row, and it was amazing. And he went and he gave me all the, like, he, he burned me 
tapes or CDs or whatever of her music, and I became obsessed. We do a mix. And you made me a mix. And uh, I have every one of the things she's ever put. I actually just saw her in concert like last year. Wow. Again. Yeah, I've seen her like was five times. I'll have to check it out. Um, other points. I mean, it's it, the and... music you want to hear when you want to like slit your wrists and like, you yeah, know, when, you see, my dad's. Um... My um, my mom's husband years ago, so this is in the 90s, he had heard she did a song called I Will Remember You. I will remember you. Anyway, my uh, mother's husband liked the song and he's like, oh, that's someone you listen to, right? And I said, yeah. So I loaned him all of the CDs and he's like, he gave them back. He's like, I want to kill myself. Like they use yeah. her in the uh, advertisements yeah, this, for like uh, abuse puppies. I don't tend to listen to depressing music. I must be like, you know what I'm like? She's if I have an 80s scam or something really metal, I'm not really. Or a fleet with Matt John. Try her though, she's beautiful. It's yeah, um, I'll a have Canadian. a Oh. As we do well. like a Canadian. We do um, like a good Canadian. We do. But yeah, a, a couple of points of Snyder in this episode. Yeah, again, <laughs> being an absolute bell end through <laughs> the entire episode. He's just hateful. His and there's joy. a moment I want to mention where uh, after. Uh, Buffy's been expelled and he goes up to the phone and he says, oh, I've got good news for the mayor. Precursors, we've got Precursor this coming. Foreshadowing. No spoilers, but obviously if anybody's watched that episode, it meant something, you know, yeah. Yeah. that's to come. The um, definitely the whole Willow's first kind of thing in magic, you know, where, where we're seeing that there's something, there's something that oh, she can do that nobody else can man. do. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the whole moment in the hospital bed where she's sat and she's looking down and, you know, all of a sudden she's in yes. full Latin, head up. You know, it's absolutely... Yeah. I feel this episode, again, for Spike of Buffy's exchanges and Joyce, it's joyful. You see a different Spike from what we've seen. He was a sarcastic villain. Yes, he had style. But at this yeah. point, he's interacting with the enemy and... Telling his story like an old person, as you say, he's saying it's walking happy meals. Well, why would I want this to change? Right. You know? And it makes it's sense. Great. You know, in theory, everybody wants the world to end until it does. And then you're like, well, now what? Yeah. And he wants his Drew back. It's a big, big indication as well as what we find as we go on that Drew is the most important thing to him pretty much most oh, of the time that, until that's yeah. not. Mm-hmm. And even, you know, honestly, and we won't jump the gun on this, but even when she's not with him, you know, he's still obsessed with her. He'll always be obsessed with her. Absolutely. I and I'm not going to mention part. the scene you're on about, but I guarantee I know which scene you're on about where they're not together anymore and they actually hate each other, but he's still obsessed. He's obsessed, yeah. Um, it involves through. some kind of sticky demon, is all I'm going to say. I was thinking that. I, I knew you were. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, he's great in this. He really is. He uh, comes into his own and the whole driving away thing. And it's like, I think I was definitely personally remember as good as it was for the Angel and Buffy drama and the whole, the whole Scooby gang dynamic and everything, all the drama and she's gone and all the rest of it. It was like, for me, it was like, I need to see more of Spike. It was like, oh my God, this character is so cool. And I, I think remember. we need Spike's you know? first episode where he runs down the welcome to Sunnydale sign. So it's kind of fitting. Yes, it is. It's like it's gone full circle. Mm -hmm. But he you want it back straight away. It's like it's not going to be the same now because we need to see what else. Now we've seen like another side of him as well as the evil side. You know, it, it was one of them from, I think, as I said, being English, and he just, as you said, the whole speech about Manchester United and all the rest of it. And it's like, I'll be honest, I will say, most people who support Manchester United don't come from Manchester. Sorry about that. Yeah. It's one of those things. Uh, but it's nice to hear that in an American TV show like it was for us. Right. You, I mean, you got the token English person in, in a lot of things, like in Fraser, you know, there was token English person, etc. Right. And again, this is, again, jumping to a future episode, but um, to Lerou... To Lerou to Lula Rasa, uh, where he's like, you named Lula me Rasa. Randy oh. Giles. Yeah. <laughs> well, Amazing. I don't have, need a shag, Giles. But yeah, no. So I <laughs> yeah. do love when they throw the um, 
the little <laughs> sorry, I'm just talking about line of uh, your life flashed before your eyes. <laughs> cup of tea, cup of tea. Nearly got a shag, cup of tea. <laughs> I actually had that on a mug that my friend got me. Oh, it's actually a Oh, cup. Adam says, whoa, we'll did I stumble it. upon a supermodel channel? You did, Adam. You're totally oh, right. Well, clearly. <laughs> uh, it was stunning. Voguing. <laughs> Adam is such a but big yeah, boy um, today. Adam, that's what I have. Adam's son went to his first school. Day I saw. Day. Adorable. So proud. Um, yeah, so that is that is our episodes then. I feel like um, now next week we're going to do a little early. We're going to do 1 p.m. Yes, Eastern we're going to uh, yeah, 6, 6 p.m. My uh, time. Yep. Okay time. Because I have to pick my nephew up at 2.30. So what time oh, is it gosh. when you have to go to the dentist? 2.30. 2.30. Of course, 2.30. So, um, see what we did there. Booth Hurdy. Um, so we really appreciate you guys. Claire, you want to give anybody some shout outs? Uh, just the usuals. I will shout out the wonderful Perfect Turd podcast, uh, Joe and Lamar, who are amazing, awesomely supportive. I was actually chatting to him about what we talked about last week about his toilet habits the other night. I said that we mentioned him. He was very proud that we mentioned him and he's spreading the word and he's never going to be ashamed as we discussed the other night. I told him, good on you. Good on you. Yeah. That was great. Um, and I'm going to be catching up with him soon um, and having a little chat because I haven't for ages. I love those two. Also, our favourites, uh, Hammersville Horror Podcast, horror movies of the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s and Scream Until You Like It. Also, I'd like to shout out Dan Fires. Uh, I say it wrong. Dan Fires, which is the band that I was doing some merch for this week. The awesome mm -hmm. metal band. Um, check them out on Facebook and Instagram. Will you put a link um, for them so we can? Yeah, I shall pop that in the description when the link goes up. As long as everything, uh, as well as everything we have tonight, all the different little bits and pieces, all the songs uh, about the Emmy nomination for this. All the actors we talked about tonight and anything else that we talked about will be in the link in the description. And we want to thank Mr. Richard Bacon for As being always, Mr. Richard Bacon. My long-suffering husband for all his technical help every oh, week. And put up, I'm putting all the links in the description. <laughs> and and you guys can't anything. see it from there, but he's completely naked on the other end of that camera. He is. He's completely naked behind it now. Always. Yeah. Always. I'll show you when you're not live. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my loves. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day, and we will see you next week for season three, episode we one will. and two. Start of a new season. Can't wait. All right, love, love you. Love you. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye.